Hi everyone, Renee here. I've got my updated all mineral sunscreen favorites for you today, and that includes everything, not just sunscreen for the face, protection for the head, for the body, for the, you know, even makeup. Personally, I am very equal opportunity when it comes to sunscreens, as long as I know that it will give me sufficient protection and it's something that I will be comfortable wearing every single day and often then, you know, that is my criteria. But this one is just for those of you who prefer sunscreens with all 100% mineral filters. So today I'm going to show you some new favorites, formulas that have stood out the most to me over the last year and the ones that I just really want to use all the time. If you want to see some of my all-time favorite mineral sunscreens, then please refer back to my previous video that I did last year and some of the previous ones because those are still formulas that I feel um, are some of the best of the best. Let's talk about one of the most wearable mineral sunscreen formulas that I have experienced to date. That would be this one from First Aid Beauty. Their weightless liquid mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide. This has a broad spectrum of SPF 30 and uses 16.8% non-nano zinc oxide. This truly is what it claims to be weightless. And this also has a universal tint, which I feel is so blendable, one of the most blendable, mainly because the formula itself is so liquidy and light and so sheer. So it really just kind of blends out into nothing. This really doesn't add any additional color on my skin. It just kind of blends out. I actually thought that it might be a little dark. This sits really well under other layers. It sits really well under makeup. You just don't feel like you know, you have sunscreen on. Well, for me, this is truly a non-invasive sunscreen, which is probably the best thing I could say about any sunscreen. One of my dearest friends, Nana, quite literally lent a hand to help me make this video. Um, her skin tone, it's on the darker side. And so even though I'm very aware that there are a lot of skin tones in between ours and even beyond, this is just another point of reference that I hope you may be able to feel is helpful. On Nana's skin, this pretty much just blends out and it will control any kind of excess shininess on your skin. So there's a velvety finish but it's not drying. This will still allow your radiance, which we work really hard for, to shine through. One of the bigger standouts for me this year came from Biosance, their Squalane and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen, SPF of 30. Their previous all mineral sunscreen was sadly just unwearable for me. The cast was intense, but also it was very thick and oily. So a few months ago, they came out with this one. I don't know what kind of voodoo is happening here, but it, it's working. This contains 14% non-nano zinc oxide. There's no tint to it at all, and it is completely sheer. In fact, I was really impressed because they made a video, and I'm going to link um, you to the page where you can see that video, where one of the Biosance staff members, who's around the same skin tone as Nana, she demoed this and it just completely disappeared on her skin. I also appreciate how moisturizing this is. It's a great moisturizer sunscreen hybrid, and it leaves a beautiful dewy finish. Like not everyone wants to have a dry touch mattifying sunscreen finish. In fact, upon application, this almost just transforms into like a squalane type texture. So it's almost like you're applying squalane on your skin, except for this will sink in and dry down. It won't just sit on top of your skin, which I really like. I've really been enjoying this ultimate sunscreen hybrid formula from Elia, their Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. It actually reminds me of some of the old school CC creams, except for this is in a watery serum form. This is skincare, sun protection, and makeup all in one, and this is actually really flattering on the skin. It's rare to find makeup using mineral filters. Usually it's the chemical filters because they're invisible. This is more coverage than I'm used to. I would say this is at least a medium coverage, but it's still, the skin still looks really natural. It's still a natural, fresh looking finish. Um, maybe a little on the dewy side, but again, this has a good amount of zinc oxide, so it's not gonna be like oily. 
This has 12% non-nano zinc oxide. And the formula itself is just really hydrating and soothing. So this contains niacinamide, sodium hyaluronate. It also has elantoin and bisabolol and just all the soothing anti-inflammatory ingredients. If you feel like you don't want to use so much of this, it's okay to layer this over another sunscreen. I often actually layer my sunscreens in two layers. Sometimes I have a chemical formula and then I top it off with an, a mineral powder or sometimes I use this and then put a mineral powder over it as well. But either way, um, you could layer this on top of your favorite sunscreen. Side note, before using a mineral sunscreen, you always want to make sure you give it a good shake because um, mineral particles tend to be heavy and they can kind of fall to the bottom. So you want to make sure it's just really well dispersed in the formula before you apply it. I talked about this new one briefly in my morning skincare routine. That's Claire's Midday Blue UV Shield. This has an SPF of 50 with a PA of four pluses. So you are getting good high protection with this. This uses non-nanoparticles and in my opinion is a greatly improved reformulation of their previous all mineral sunscreen, which was, it was kind of unwearable for me because it was, it had such a strong cast. Application wise, this is beautiful. It is light, it's hydrating, it's thin, and it goes on really easily. You can actually use quite a bit of it and it still not feel like you're loading up your skin with sunscreen, which is good. And not so noticeable on me, but I can see the potential for this to have a tone up effect um, for people who have darker skin tones. So you may experience a bit of a cast um, when you use this. The finish of this, in my opinion, is definitely more on the dry touch mattifying side. And I, I feel like this will suit anyone with normal to oilier skin types more than someone with dry skin. In the summertime, especially layered over moisturizer, I don't really feel like there is a drying effect. Although I can see that there is definitely sort of an oil control mattifying finish on this. This does have some fragrance to it, which pretty much disappears quickly after application. Um, and I don't mind the way it smells so much. One of you guys nailed it. It smells like buttery popcorn. So my last year's favorites, I included this one from Purito, their comfy water block. I would say that application wise and elegance, these are really, really similar. Um, this one probably has a little bit more of a tone up effect potential. Um, but I would say other than that, one of the main point of differences in wearability is that I have actually tried a few tubes of this by now and there is a little inconsistency in terms of how much this pills i have some tubes that don't pill and others where there can be more pilling i know how to work around pilling in sunscreens but this on the other hand just does not pill which i love you can apply you know makeup on top of this anything on top of this this won't you know this won't shed if you watch my recent drugstore favorites video you would have seen me talk about this one from Verst, their guards up daily mineral sunscreen this has a broad spectrum spf of 35 and also contains 15.2 percent non-nano zinc oxide beautiful elegant formula this actually reminds me the most of the super goop matte um they are similar in the way they apply, in the way they feel. They both work really well as primers. And when you use them, you're not gonna experience greasiness throughout the day. Um, but at the same time, I don't experience dryness throughout the day. I don't experience drying from having this much zinc oxide in it. It's a really nice formula. This feels and applies like a lightweight primer. It does seem to blur things out a little bit, but it sits beautifully under makeup and it doesn't pill when you apply makeup on over this. This is oil free, but like I said, it doesn't, it, it's not going to dry out your skin if you're someone who has dry skin. I feel like this can accommodate a wide range of skin conditions. It feels really comfortable on the skin. There's some really lovely antioxidant plant extracts and, you know, um, all of these formulas also include iron oxides, which is a good thing to have in your mineral formulas because they really help boost the protection against UVA in particular. These, out of these two, in case you're wondering, I would say this is even more lightweight than this if that's possible, but they're both seriously lightweight. This is definitely the more blendable choice in my opinion, the First Aid Beauty. For those of you who want a bit of luxury in your sunscreen, I am actually in awe of the fact that I have not spoken about this yet. Um, I actually was certain that I talked about this in one of my earliest sunscreen videos for mineral sunscreens and lo and behold, Alas, no. I mean, Josh Rosebrook's Nutrient Day Cream with an SPF of 30 is probably one of the first 
all mineral sunscreens that I used that just did not leave a cast and was so elegant. The first time I used this must have been like over three to four years now. I think maybe the reason why I didn't talk about it is because I couldn't separate it as um, a sunscreen. It was more like a moisturizer that just had an SPF to me. At this point, we just know better whether it's labeled as a moisturizer or a sunscreen. As long as the SPF value is there, it's protection. It's the same protection. So I have been revisiting this, especially because I never actually got to try their tinted formula. It's about as beautiful as I remember it being. Lightweight, sinks into the skin. It really, there's no cast on me. In fact, I have a hard time distinguishing which one works better for me, the tinted or the non-tinted. It's kind of the same effect. This has all the nourishing plant herbal extracts and oils in it. There's also no silicones in it. This leaves a beautiful velvety finish, so it's not gonna be oily or shiny or greasy. As a lightweight summer moisturizer with protection, this is beautiful. For this delicate area around our eyes, I'm loving Supergoop's Bright Eyed 100% Mineral Eye Cream, SPF of 40. I can't use regular sunscreen close to my eyes because it does migrate, and when it does and it gets in there, it is a stinging akin to torture. So I'm always on the lookout for formulas that are made specifically for this area, and that's also cosmetically elegant as well. I mean, I've used those, you know, the sticks, and you know, they're waxy, they can cause some milia. It's not like, you know, you could put makeup over them. I've talked about the Color Science 3 in 1, which is probably my favorite. This one from Supergoop though, this Bright Eyed, does a similar thing. It's also 3 in 1, but it's more affordable. This has a neutralizing, somewhat brightening tint to it. So it really does a good job of neutralizing the dark circles that I tend to get. And sometimes, I don't even need concealer after this. This isn't like a concealer. There really isn't a lot of coverage happening here, but it also sits really well under concealer. This also lightly hydrates and moisturizes and treats your skin. It's got some beautiful antioxidant extracts. It's got probiotics. It also has caffeine to depuff. And of course, the sun protection. The SPF of 40 is actually pretty high for what we usually find for this area around our eyes. You can apply a liberal amount around your eyes. Your eyes will not sting and also it won't get like thick or cakey. It also doesn't dry this area out throughout the day or cause any stinging, which usually is a deal breaker for me when it comes to zinc oxide and in eye formulas. The other body mist that I love that is 100% mineral is Super Goop's Play, 100% mineral body mist. Another super gentle formula that contains no alcohol. Those are really difficult to find, by the way. I don't mind um, alcohol in my body sunscreens, but when you find one that doesn't have it and it's still so elegant and it doesn't, it's not compromised at all in application, then that's really special. If you have sensitive skin, these are great options. This also makes it great to use on kids. Again, no chemical propellants in here. You can spray from any awkward angle you choose. And the formula of this is actually so nourishing and really quite beautiful. It's full of antioxidants, hydrators. This is lightweight, but I can see that there could be a potential for a white cast if you have a darker skin tone. This has green tea, vitamin C derivatives, some beautiful plant extracts. It feels really nice on the skin. This has a zero scent to it, like nothing. It doesn't even smell like regular sunscreen. This has a dry touch effect, which just kind of takes away any shine on your skin. This absorbs and dries down almost instantly instantaneously after you rub it in, faster than even the beauty counter. So you can actually apply a lot of it and not spend a lot of time just rubbing it in. Another super goop formula that just is exactly what I need is their Poof 100% Mineral Part powder with an SPF of 45. So I wear a hat a lot of the time, but protecting your scalp from the sun is so underrated. It's something that we really need to do because we're getting the bulk of it right over here. I get that we're covered with hair, but there are a lot of exposed areas too. And anyone who's had a sunburn on their scalp realizes how brutal it is. This dispenses like a dry shampoo. It actually works like a dry shampoo. This is very much like, you know, the Bumble and Bumble Preta powder. So it dispenses enough to just really coat the areas of your scalp. It really soaks up any kind of oiliness on your hair. It keeps things nice and dry. And at the same time, it also kind of gives your roots a little bit of a lift. The way I use this is I target the parting of my hair. I just apply it where the parting is, where, you know, there may be some more scalp exposed, and then I just pat it in. At first, there's 
like a white powder on your hair, but that eventually disappears. This formula has antioxidants, vitamin C derivatives, ceramides. I mean, this is not just good for your scalp, but it protects it and it gives it some cosmetic you know, benefits as well. If you caught my last video on my most recent drugstore favorites, you would have seen me talking about Physician's Formula Triple Defense Multicolor Stick with an SPF of 20. Physician's Formula has some of my favorite drugstore makeup items, and their defense line in particular um, has an added element of environmental defense. I am definitely into multi-sticks, and the reason why I love theirs is just because it works so well. The whole SPF value is an added benefit. This has 11% titanium dioxide and 2% zinc oxide. But really, the application is just fabulous. It's very pigmented, but also it blends out with like very minimal effort. It's really silky. You can use it for your cheeks, lips, eyelids, just anywhere. I also really love the shades that are available. Their warm coral and natural rose are just perfect for me. I mean, you're not going to be relying singularly on this to give you sun protection or the sun protection that you need, but it is kind of nice to layer that extra on top of everything else. And for me, it's right in those areas where I have more hyperpigmentation. So I'm all for, you know, applying a little bit more of this over it. That's it for my most recent mineral sunscreen favorites. If you want to see some of my past favorites that still stand the test of time now, then I will leave the links everywhere. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.